Alright YouTube, what is going on? So today we're going to be doing a video on this Dell Precision M6400. I did a short video, or this computer was included in another video that I did a while back of a bunch of computers I got for free, and uh, of course this was one of them. I never made a like full overview little video of this machine, and it's actually kind of, it's a cool, it's a cool laptop, so we're going to be doing that now. So obviously, as you can see, this is red. I did get this uh, from my friend Chris, of which he got it from a computer shop that was literally just going to throw this thing out. And it is fully functional. It, ju it was just missing a hard drive when I got it. But I purchased an SSD for it and installed Windows on it. And here we are. So this is a, a high-end workstation. This is uh, circa about 2009, 2010, I think. And so, yeah, this was pretty high-end back in the day. This one... I cannot remember if this one, I think, no, this one is just a Core 2 Duo, so it's not the highest end one, but I believe it does have 16 gigs of RAM in it, and it also now has a uh, 120 gigabyte uh, Samsung 850 Evo SSD, so it's pretty good, and I believe it does have NVIDIA graphics as well, and the high resolution display, so this thing is really, really nice. Of course, it's not light or anything, this is a big beefy laptop, but this is a, a mobile workstation, so... Of course, that's kind of what it's designed for. It's not really designed to go to Starbucks, but it's in pretty decent shape. It does have this dent in the lid. I can't remember. I don't think this was my fault. I do think this was my fault, though, these scratches right here. I was uh, transporting this laptop over to this house in my when I was moving, <clears throat> and I had another laptop on top of it that had, I guess, like a screw sticking out of it, and it kind of just marred up the, the lid a little bit. But, I mean, oh well. This computer is, like, over nine ten years old so it's not perfect but yeah again it's pretty thick it's got a pretty big uh, beefy cooling system which I'll show you a little bit later the only thing on the back we have our power there let's go around the rest of the ports because there are quite a few and I do want to go over them so here you go uh, here we have our Kensington lock a full-size Firewire 400 port also known as an IEEE 1394 on the Windows side of things this is your uh, microphone and headphone ports we have two USB 2.0 ports there, an SD card slot with the original uh, Dell blanking plate, which is pretty nice. And uh, below that, we have our slot loading DVD-RW drive. So like I said, this is a little bit more of a high-end machine, and I believe this was an option back in the day. Of course, we have our PC and Express card. Uh, well, it's a... Uh, sorry, this is just a PC card slot. Sorry about that. Um, moving towards the front, the... This is pretty clean on the front. The latch on this is kind of weird. In other words, like I think sometimes it likes to get stuck. I can't remember though. But of course, it's just those two latches. They're kind of like a uh, a pre-unit body MacBook Pro in that in that <clears throat> in that regard. Anyway, moving towards the right side of the machine, we have our you know the rest of our ports here. This is a uh, Express card slot. So yeah, sorry. The PC cards over there. The Express cards here. This is our Wi-Fi toggle switch. Of course, that turns it on and off. I believe this is our uh, some sort of auto connect or just a search function. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, I, I'm probably wrong on that actually. But <laughs> moving on, we have I believe this is just uh, 10 100 Ethernet. I don't know if it's a gigabit. It might be though, just because of the you know high end nature of this machine, but. Yeah, there is our display port. It actually has a VGA port on it, which is kind of interesting. Again, this is more, I, I assume this is here because of like uh, projectors and stuff that you would use in a business environment. That's really the only reason I can think of as to why that's there. Here we have a powered USB port, as noted by this little charging bolt right there. And then we have our USB E SATA combo port. So that's pretty cool. So that's pretty much as far as it goes for ports. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the bottom of the laptop now because there's more goodies in here to go ahead and reposition the camera really quick so of course here we have our battery the battery in this is getting old so it doesn't really last a whole long time but it, I mean it lasts enough to do a video like this one so um, this thing is actually pretty easy to get into as well this whole panel comes off which I'm going to show you right now it's pretty much what you do is you remove the battery so that's step one and then there's normally a screw right here that's holding this lid in, but it's missing on mine, so therefore you just uh, slide this down, and this comes off, and then of course you have access to a bunch of stuff, like your hard drive number one here, which an SSD is in, like I said. Here's a hard drive number two. I believe this is a 750 gig Seagate drive. 
I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that's the drive that I put in here, but I guess we're going to find out. Of course, I was missing the caddy for this one, so I just kind of shoved it in there and then put some uh, duct tape right there, just kind of hold it in. It's ghetto, but it works. Here is two of the four RAM slots. The other two are uh, underneath the keyboard. And then I believe this would be for uh, the wireless WAN, which is like a, a 3G network, I believe. And this, I'm not exactly sure what that is for, but it does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So it's not fully decked out, but it, it has enough to get you by, in other words. There is a Windows Vista product key, and then in case any of you want that, I will never use it, so it doesn't matter. Um, of course, like I said, you can't really see a ton of the cooling system here, but... Um, we have two large cooling fans and then two big heat sinks, uh, of course one for the GPU, one for the CPU respectively. Uh, I forget exactly what the GPU is in this, but we're going to find out as soon as I boot it up. So, without further ado, let me go ahead and put this stuff back together and we will get on with that while we can. Let me go ahead and put this guy back up in there. And there we are. So, now let's go ahead and flip her over and get to the boot up, which is going to be a little bit more interesting, I hope. <laughs> so, of course, being a business class machine of this era, this is a 16x10 uh, display. I believe this one is 1920x1200, so a little bit higher end than, you know, your average laptop from this time, which usually would come with like a 1280x800 screen or whatever on the lower end consumer uh, side of things. Let's go ahead and boot it up. This also does have, of course, a full-size keyboard with numpad. Again, another another thing you would expect a workstation machine like this to have. We got our trackpad and our track point right here. I believe this is backlit as well, as you may be able to see right there. So, again, this is a little bit of a higher end machine as I keep <clears throat> reiterating this entire video. You go ahead and zoom in up on the screen. And yeah, as you can see, that beautiful 1920 by 1200 resolution is it's pretty nice. So, yeah. 16 by 10 is actually really nice and something I wish more um, networks, or not, sorry, not networks. I wish more computers or laptops would take advantage of. As far as I know, I mean, the MacBook Pros are... 16 by 10 but a lot of other laptops are 16 by 9 which just isn't quite as nice for like productivity purposes watching movies of course yeah but yeah it's just nice so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, system properties like we always do because I forget exactly what CPU is in this so as you can see right there we have a Core 2 Duo T9550 which I believe is is quite up there in terms of Core 2 Duos I believe the highest end Core 2 Duo there is is the T9900. And then of course we have the QX, like the QX9000, the QX9300 above that, which of course are Core 2 quads. You have 16 gigs of RAM there, of course it's 64-bit OS, like, you know, this is 2018, guys, of course it is. Of course, like I, you know, as you may be able to notice, I put Windows 7 on this just because I'm not a huge fan of Windows 10, and, you know, it's just something that I prefer to do my gaming computer is running Windows 10, but only because I need it for Forza. Uh, let's go ahead and not do that. Take a look at hardware monitor so I can tell you what graphics is in it. We have an NVIDIA Quadro FX 3700M. So again, you know, more workstation class stuff there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about the specs. Let's see, the wear level is 13%, so that's not terrible for the battery. I thought it was a lot worse than that. It just this thing just does not get very good battery life. And of course, you can see our 850 Evo and the uh, the Seagate drive, which I believe is also 750 gigs. Oh, it's it might not even be formatted. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I think after I reinstalled Windows on this, I just kind of you know reinstalled it on the SSD, formatted the whoops, sorry, formatted the hard drive and never reformatted it, so I'm going to have to fix that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much I can show you t with this machine as far as like what it can do. I mean, it, it's still usable, of course, because it's a high-end workstation from the Core 2 Duo days, and I mean, Core 2 Duos are still adequate for like your everyday web browsing and stuff, but beyond that type of stuff, not really, but I mean, yeah. 
So that's pretty much going to be it for the overview on this guy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the Dell Precision M6400. Go ahead and shut her down. Whoa, that's weird. Okie doke. Oh, that's what's... What the fuck? Okay, anyway, thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you later.